Federer's Roger Federer's commencement speech at Dartmouth College. Uh, I believe he did this kind of as a favor to his agent Tony Godsig, gotcha. who went to Dartmouth. And uh, Tony, or actually, I don't think his son plays there. But anyways, I know a kid from BC here who, who plays on the Dartmouth men's tennis team. Anyway, shout out. Um, forgetting his name now. Um, <laughs> but JP, what did you think of that speech? It's got the rounds on social media. P people are like raving about how good the speech was and how kind of like real it was from, you know, who many people called the goat. Dude, for obviously a lot of people, a lot of, I'm not familiar with a lot of the listeners. If there's one thing you need to know about me is that I love motivational speeches, inspirational speeches. When I go to the gym and work out, probably 70% of the time it's motivational speeches and not music in my head Amazing. to get me juiced during a, during a set. And what was your favorite part of that speech? Dude, my favorite part has to be the, the, uh, the, the point, like every, how important every point is, but how you got to move past it. Correct. And got like when he was dropping that on me and you, and he broke down the stats. He's like, I've won 80% of my singles matches. Guess how many points I've won. 53 percent yeah i'm like bro i ran through my i ran through a brick wall after <laughs> he said that he's like you gotta be you got what did he say he's like you gotta every point is the only thing that's going on in the world it's super important but when it's over you move past it when you're playing a point it has to be the most important thing in the world and it is but when it's behind you it's behind you this mindset is really crucial because it frees you to fully commit to the next point at the next point after that dude Hard i mean what, like sports is literally the best teacher of life because you can apply exactly what he said to anything like if you're at work and you're given a, a task and say it's, it's kicking your butt and say if you do mess up ultimately there's another point coming right after it and Come you got to be ready for that you can't focus on the, the one that just passed yeah absolutely and he's that's what yeah you know, he's exemplified that in tennis so many times like he was always you know later on in his career the calm cool collected guy like all these moments where you know he would hit a he would you know he would have match point or whatever he hit into the net and you got to recuperate for the next one and you know so many times he got over the line so many times you didn't like i remember later in his career as a federer fan there's like way more crushing losses like <laughs> the wimbledon 2019 Ooh. final to Djokovic. like if that's oh. me i'm just like burying a hole burying myself in a hole out back afterwards i would never recover but yeah, it's over. He'd already won 20 majors. He'd already won like over a hundred titles. Like he's like, and then he came back and he beat Djokovic at the year end championships that year, found a way, you know, and he at 38 shout out or whatever he was at the time. So yeah, my, I think my favorite part of that speech though, was his line. It was like, such, I don't, I think somebody else has had to have said this before, but he said, I worked extremely hard to make it look so easy. Yeah. F he's like, nothing is, uh, Oh my gosh, what'd he say? Effortless? So here's the first. Effortless is a myth. I mean it. I say that as someone who has heard that word a lot. Effortless. People would say my play was effortless. Most of the time, they meant it as a compliment. But it used to frustrate me when they would say he barely broke a sweat. Or is even trying? The truth is, I had to work very hard to make it look easy. And he said he, that kind of pissed him off. People would always be like, "You, may, he's so effortless out there. He has no effort. <laughs> like he just plays that that hard so well." And I did have a great conversation with a guy, um, with now I'm forgetting his name, Canadian player Jesse Levine. Uh, he came Dude, on the show. Dude, I love Jesse. You know him? That's my guy, bro. That's my guy. Okay, we're gonna have to talk more about that. That's sick. But uh, yeah, he's great. And he went and trained. I'm sure you know the story. He went and trained with Federer in like Saudi Arabia or Dubai or wherever they were uh, back like maybe 10, 15 years ago when they were a bit younger. And he said Federer was a savage on the training block. Like he would, he would practice for five hours straight in a training block. A lot of guys will do two a days. Like they'll go hit for an hour and a half, hit for an hour and a half in the, in the, in the evening and work out. He would like work out and then practice for five hours straight in the sun. And his thought was always like, you're going to do this in a match. Like you got to practice like you play. And, so Feder would be out there not breaking a sweat, a sweat, correct? Um, and then he said, "It's not because I didn't work hard." He's like, "I worked hard off the court. I worked super hard to make it look so easy." And I was like, "Damn, Jeez. that is sick." 
literal literal natural juice this is what roger federer has <laughs> natural <laughs> juice I, I did see a funny meme. It was just like Federer. I worked super hard to make it look so easy. And then it's like also Federer. It's like a video of him warming up. And it's just like the most lazy warm ups yeah. ever. Like the most natural talent just flicking his wrist, like slapping the ball around. It's like there's a bit of both. There's definitely a bit of both. 